Well, hello everyone. <clears throat> We're about at that point in our uh, web design process here that uh, it's time to start adding a little bit of content. Now, uh, I have put just a, I've copied and pasted just a little bit of text here onto my index page so we can get an idea of what that is going to look like. Um, and uh, probably the, the next thing we need to do is to jump into fireworks and talk about uh, preparing images. Uh, preparing images so they can go on your website. Um, so let's do that in this tutorial. Let me jump over to Fireworks. So really when we prepare images uh, to go onto a website, I'm going to go over sort of four basic uh, steps to go through just to kind of keep it simple. No special effects, no um, filters, layers, all that kind of stuff. Just if I've got 50 photos to get ready, Maybe I'm going to make 50 thumbnails, or I need to get 50 photos ready. I need to do it pretty fast. So let me just open up um, a photo that is certainly in need of some work. So this is a photograph, or actually a slide, that was scanned in. So you can see that it was dusty. There's lots of dust up here in the corner. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about that in this tutorial, but it's pretty big. You can see this picture is 30. Uh, about 3,135 by 2,106 and fireworks has zoomed out to 16% so I'm only seeing it at 60% of its actual size. Now what I'd like is a smaller version of this that could sit kind of over in the, on this right side of this page. Kind of not quite a thumbnail but kind of in that range. So I'd like to create something that's a little bit smaller there maybe you know 150 pixels across the top. Okay, so we need to do some adjustments to this, and uh, not only that, is the slide has started to lose its color, and it had pretty much lost all the other colors except for just the red um, that you can see. So let's go through the process of preparing this to go on to the to the page there. <clears throat> so first thing I want to, while I still have all of my pixels, I want to let Fireworks try to do a little bit of color correction. So I'm going to select the image. And once I do that, I get it gets a little blue border around it. And down in the property bar here, you'll see that I've got this little filters area. Um, let me zoom back out on it. And I'm going to click that add button there and go to the adjust colors. And there is a tool in here. There's a, some nice sophisticated tools in here. But I just want to do something uh, quick and a little bit more simple. I'm going to click on the levels. So my levels meter first comes up and you can see this little histogram that shows up and all that Fireworks did was it went into each one of my pixels and took a survey of where that pixel falls on this scale here along the bottom. And you can see that uh, pretty obvious most of them fall way down here on the darker end. Uh, so <clears throat> if I had a lot of practice I could go through and start dragging each one of these sliders and adjusting it myself. I can even adjust it uh, just by individual color. But that could take a lot of time and a lot of practice to get it right. Um, Fireworks has an ability to kind of give this photo its best shot automatically. And that's what this little auto button is over here. So I'm just going to click on that. And once I do that, Fireworks did a pretty good job. It got rid of a lot of that red, but still left the red inside of this, uh, you know, shirt that was sitting here, which is great. Um, so I'm going to be happy with that and just say OK. Now, once I do that, you can see down here in that filters box, um, it shows that there's been a filter applied. The levels filter has been applied here. And if I wasn't quite sure if it looked better before or after, that little check mark there, I can turn that filter on and off. I'm sorry, I think I said in my in my intro that we weren't going to do any filters, but I guess I am. Uh, so that lets me turn it on and off. Now this picture is fairly obvious that it is an improvement over the previous one. On a lot of photos, it might be a lot harder to tell. And on some photos, adding the filters command will actually make it worse. So if I needed to take this off of this picture, I would select it here and push the minus and that filter would come off. So I'm going to put it back on, but this time I don't even need to see that histogram because there's a levels was down here. There's they added a little auto levels uh, to the top of this menu and that does the same thing that I did, but without me having to go and actually see uh, the histogram. Okay, so first thing is to correct color if needed. <clears throat> 
Now the next thing is um, I'm going to crop this a little bit because if I want this on my website, I don't need all the shower curtain in here and a lot of this other stuff. I, I don't really need that. So I'm just going to grab my cropping tool and click and drag around the area that I want to keep. So I might kind of, whoops, let me just try that again. Click and drag around the area I want to keep. I want it to really focus um, on this kid in the bath. His name is Mike, actually. He's about 45 years old. Um, well, not, not at the time, but currently he's about that old. Okay, so I can just sort of fine tune this cropping rectangle by grabbing its corners, or if I click and drag in the middle, I can reposition the whole rectangle. Um, try to find a nice spot there for Mike in the bath. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, something like that, or uh, maybe over there. I want his hand in the picture. Okay, so once I get it close, I'm just going to double click inside the area that I want to keep. And I'm still really zoomed out, so it looks a little bit small. So I might zoom in a bit on this so I can see it more full size. Okay. Okay, so now there's Mike in the bath. That's about what I want. Um, so I've cropped it, and again, it's crop if needed. So I'm just getting rid of parts of the picture that I don't want um, in the picture. Okay, so um, Mike in the bath is looking okay. Uh, the next thing I need to do is make him the right size, or make this image the right size. Because when I cropped, you can see down here, it's still 896 pixels wide, which if I put that on my website now, it would that's wider than my whole layout, so it would take over the whole site. So I need to adjust the image size. Now, a quick way to do that here in Fireworks is to click anywhere out here in the gray, and that deselects everything. And when you do that, the default um, properties bar shows up, and there's a button on there that does image size. So I can click that. If you don't want to use that, you can always go to Modify, um, Canvas, and Image Size. Those, both of those places take, open the same window up. So my image size window comes up. It tells me information about it, but it's also the place where I can um, change sizes. So I'm going to highlight that and say I want this to be about 150 pixels across. You may notice that uh, it changed when I changed one dimension. The other dimension changed in exactly the right ratio, and it did that because the, this this constrained proportions box was checked, and that's the default. I'm going to ignore this print size here. It has no um, it has no effect on this image if all I'm doing with this image is putting it on a website. This only matters if I'm sending it to the printer, which I'm not going to. Say OK. Resizes it again. I can probably go up to 100% now. So there's my image um, at 100%. That's its actual size. And it's ready now for the step three, which is to um, optimize this or to export it out in a, in a format that is suitable to go on a website. So I'm going to do that over here under the File menu down to Image Preview. And since it's a photograph, I'm going to assume that it will be a JPEG. But I'm going to split my window anyway so I can see two versions of it. Now if I leave it at a quality of 99, which is not compressed, it's 35K. So um, I, I might stick with that. That's not that big of an image. Um, but I'm just going to click on the bottom one here and maybe reduce the quality a little bit, maybe down to 80. And I can see just by reducing that quality down to 80, my file size goes down dramatically and the image still looks pretty good. So um, this is where I would have to just use my own judgment. Um, what I'm trying to do is get the smallest file size, but also retain uh, the, an acceptable image quality. So maybe I'll take it to 90% quality because that makes it a little bit better. Um, the, the default here is to sharpen the color edges. If you toggle that on and off, you can see a very subtle difference. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, <clears throat> And with that now, I just am going to export this out. So I'm going to make sure I have the one I want selected since I have two versions up here. I'm going to select this bottom one and then press the export button. And here's where it's important um, that, that this image gets into the proper root folder. And I name it Mike in the Bath. And I'm going to name it Mike in the Bath 150 because I know that's 150 pixels wide because I think I might have a couple of versions of this around. Versions of this around and I don't really want to um, copy over it. Okay, so in the images folder inside of photos, that's where I'll put it. So I'm just going to say export. And now that image has been exported out. If we run over to fireworks here, I mean to Dreamweaver, 
I should be able to open my photos folder up and there is Mike in the bath 150 right at the top and now I want to place it on the page here <clears throat> and I want the text to wrap around it so um, I'm going to drag and drop this out and as I drag and drop it out it might be a little hard to see but there's a little vertical um, uh, insertion point. I don't know if you can see that there. See that little vertical line. Um, I'm going to drag and drop that right at the front okay, of that first sentence and let go of it. And um, let me get back, zoom back out here. Okay, so this is just uh, Mike in the bath. Okay, and that image goes in. Looks okay. It's not where I want it to be, but I inserted it on the first line of text. Now, if I want it to um, Okay, now that that image ha is on our page, it's in the same s table cell as a paragraph of text, and I'd like that image to be over here on the right side and have the text wrap around it. So if I select the image, and then I'm going to go down to the property bars here, properties bar, you can see way down here along the bottom, there's a region that says align. You can see it there. When I open up that menu, I get a few choices here and I want this image to align to the right. So I'm going to click right there. Let me zoom back out. So you can see just by doing that, that image floats over to the right and the text automatically wraps around it. So it makes it really nice and easy um, to do, do insert images within text. Uh, so if I select it again, I can tell it to do left and it shows up over on the left side. Now it's on the left, there's a problem that comes up. Let me just say this quick here. Um, you can see that text just comes flush right up to the image. So I need to account for that. Uh, maybe give this image some sort of padding or some sort of cushion, some sort of cushion in between there. So I'm going to select the image again. And if you look down on the properties bar, there's a right at the front here on the bottom half. It says V space and H space. So that is the padding for the photo. So if I put 15 vertical space and 15 horizontal space, um, you can see it created a nice buffer around that image. And if it was over on the right hand side, that would still um, show up. So it gives it a, some nice space to give it some breathing room. Okay, well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.